What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud. Welcome to the fourth part of my Iron Blaster tutorial. Today we're going to be painting the driver, the gunner. So I glued him up with uh, <clears throat> the, I, I think if I remember correctly, it's the right arm glues into the body and um, these straps. And um, I gave him the not armored head, but this head, you come with two options that you can use. I decided to go with that one. And here are the colors that I'm going to be using for this. Calvin Brown, Talcept Oker, Pion Beats, Dwarf Bronze, Bolt Gun Metal, Camry Brown, Bleached Bone, Bleached Purple? Really? Yep, I took a look at it and yeah, you're gonna need that. <laughs> Caridon Granite, or Charidon Granite. My favorite, then Stone. Talarn Flesh. Ogren Flesh Wash. Shadow Gray. Hawk Turquoise. And, let's see. Devlin Mud. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our model and we are going to paint his skin, all the flesh areas, with Talarn Flesh. If you haven't seen them yet, as of today, you can go and check out on Bell of Lost Souls. They've got the uh, pictures, the leaked pictures of all the new paints, um, or I guess not all the new paints, but what the, what the style of the pots are going to be like. They look kind of similar to the current ones. Um, as well as the next How to Paint Citadel Miniatures book, which looks like a, a flip book style. Very interesting stuff. Check it out. <clears throat> Thanks to uh, all my viewers who kind of pointed me in that direction. So I, um, I prepped my, my wet palette on the side and I'm using that if you were wondering why I didn't immediately start painting. I'm using my wet palette and by putting the paint there before I start I'm thinning down the paint just a little bit. I haven't been the best about keeping my paints thin. Sometimes I just paint straight from the pot just because I feel like um, that's, I don't know, like skipping that step sometimes, but it's always better to, to thin down your paint. You get sm much smoother coverage, the end result is <coughs> a lot smoother. No Nurgle! No Nurgle. No Nurgle. Oh, these kids. I'm afraid one of them is getting me sick. Uh, pure... <coughs> Purell hand sanitizer, vitamin C, all that good stuff. It's just about flu season here. Think about this time too. Last year, Papa Nergo came and gave me one of his new plagues. He was like, "Hey, war boss, want to check out one of these new plagues?" I was like, "No, was like, no, I don't." Well, that's too bad, cause I'm gonna put it in your in your face. I'm gonna make you breathe it in and get you sick. I'm like, no! Oh, okay. uh, bummer. So it looks like this guy was a victim of some uh, misfires. If you'll notice on his body, he's got some, some shards of metal poking out. Gross! <coughs> <coughs> And for the face, I'm just going to give him this uh, little overbrush, dry brush kind of thingy. One of my main arguments or uh, statements, I guess you can quote me on 
is fix it in post. Which means do it now, get it all just painted up and done with, and then we'll fix it, fix it later. I don't think I put Chaos Black in my list of paints in the beginning, but you're gonna need need some Chaos Black because uh, I just realized you need that. You need that to to do stuff. <clears throat> Chaos Black, like eyeballs and um, all sorts of other stuff. Alright, we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna get moving on to the pants. <laughs> pants, shadow gray. I guess that is is pants uh, a term to mean like bad or rubbish or not good. I've read on a lot of forums, they say like, oh, this or that is pants. And I'm like, what? Never heard that before. They say, oh yeah, this new, the new FAQ is pants. Or, I like the motto, but its rules are pants. I don't know. The thing I love about Ogre models is there's so much surface area, you can really get a nice smooth color and coverage, it's because there's so much, so much surface area to work with. So we're working our way from the inside out, so try not to get any paint onto the flesh, but you can get any paint you want onto the higher areas like his, uh, oops, like his iron fist here, <clears throat> or his uh, gauntlet bracer, or this bag, because we are going to paint over it. But if you paint over the flesh, the skin, then it's going to be not as good because you're going to have to go back and fix it. I think I might paint this material here on the inside a little bit of a different color, just because it's got it's got these stitching, so it might show that it's from a different style material. Maybe we'll paint it up like sackcloth or something. <clears throat> So, what are we going to do next? The next thing we're going to paint are... Give me a second, I have to look at the, uh, the drawing, the box art, cover art. Looks like... The next thing we're going to paint is <clears throat> the... The boots, all the straps, and the metal. We're going to paint everything in cal and brown. Some of it is going to get covered over later in tin bits and dwarf flesh. But for right now, starting here with the boots, we're going to paint with watered down Calton brown. Downtown Julie Brown, watered down Calton brown. So I gotta put a shout out right now to my good buddy, General Splatten. Many of you, most of you should know him, unless you uh, are new to YouTube and haven't gotten really familiar with the people in the hobby yet. General Splatten, he did a shout out to me a while back. Uh, I gotta do a shout out, another one to him, I think I did before, but I've uh, been checking out his Splatten Studios page, which is uh, another page he's got, and um, his Splatten Studios profile coming up with some really sick stuff, really awesome stuff there. So check him out. We're also going to do this bag with the cannonballs inside. So did you guys see, um, I guess, G 
G-Dub has come out with new plastic glue and super glue. Uh, I was like, seriously? All right, whatever. <clears throat> They're like, yo, we should sell our own glue, son. And all the execs at the meeting were like, yeah. Let's get this little baggy. <clears throat> Today we are continuing and we are going to be using in this step some Deneb stone to paint the straps and the, uh, yeah, mostly like the straps and leather things that haven't been painted yet. So for example, the cannon pulleys. <clears throat> you're gonna use that den of stone and you're gonna paint the bandages in the guy's knife that are hooked to his belt. Just cover over the Celt and Brown. Finally, wipe off most of the cow uh, the denim stone frame brush and you're going to see if you can just hit these uh, threads or wire or whatever they are holding the holding the cloth together. No worries if you make mistakes, you can always clean it up. <clears throat> We're also going to hit this little bandage 
under here. So you see how I made kind of a uh, pretty straight go in lines, matching up with the with the wire kind of threads. I'm gonna go back over and fix the coloring, but for now it's pretty good. <coughs> There you go. I'm gonna go back now and fix the wire and the guy's pantaloons. <clears throat> uh, next we're going to get started by painting on the dwarf bronze onto the gut plate. I think I might have missed Mechrite Red along with Chaos Black. That's another one we're going to need in a little while. Paint the inside of this gut plate. there but just getting the color on because when we do make right red we're gonna cover that up Sometimes if your paint is wet, the dwarf bronze is wet, it'll pool and then start to bleed over. If it does, I just let it and then go back over it later with the second coat of Mechrite Red. It's totally fine. That's what I do. As long as it's nice and smooth and has even coverage, that's really all that matters. If it's just too too hard to work with right now, being still kind of, you know, semi-wet and not dry, then just put it on the side and leave it for a while. <coughs> the weird thing is the next step, which is going to be for the, um, the cloth behind the chainmail on his loin cloth, is that it actually looks purple in the uh, pictures. It's got like this reddish purple kind of hue to it. So I'm gonna stick to it because I'm trying to be as accurate to the Games Workshop box art as possible. And that's why we need Lich Purple. It's this weird color that's gonna clash with 
the rest of the model, but um, eh, I guess it really draws the eye when you're looking at it straight on. Try looking at the box art though, it's it's going to be very interesting when you notice that, oh, the, the one piece of clothing or cloth that is kind of different, really different, is this purple loincloth. And um, we're actually going to highlight it up with, with um, Warlock Purple next, but for right now that's kind of the, the look we're going to end up with. Hey, we're going to take our bolt gun metal now and we're going to be painting any chains that are hanging off of him, or ring, rings, ringlets, as well as the chain mail. So we're going to start with the chain mail because that's the most obvious place. We're also going to be painting the cannonballs in our guy's little um, ammunition bag. There's a chainmail. Oh, and all of the metal hanging out of the body too. You're gonna be looking for rings like this that are holding the pendant onto his back. Just paint over the bronze. There are also some rings in the front. <clears throat> and the cannonballs. If you make any mistakes, no worries. Just go back and touch it up with some Calvin Brown. Hey, he's looking pretty good for only, you know, around 20 minutes of painting. We still got a little bit of ways to go, but I think he's coming along really nicely. Into the shrapnel now. Shards of metal sticking out of his body. This poor guy has been at the receiving end of many misfire rolls. I didn't know he's got an earring, huh? Right, and then we fix. First we paint and mess up, then we fix. Alright, in this step we're gonna be adding on to the teeth and the hair, so you're gonna need a little bit <laughs> of denim stone and Camry brown for the hair. So let's get started with the Camry brown. And uh, this guy has some strange little growths, tufts, that you're just gonna find right here sides popping out from his head. The first time I saw them I thought they were um they look like like they were supposed to be like flames. Like um there was a misfire and his hair caught on fire. Because the first time I actually saw them I was like that those look like way too weirdly molded to be um <clears throat> to be oh look at that mold line speaking of molded, to be a shrapnel lodged in his head. So I'm assuming it's hair, um, but it just looks like, it's very odd. So then I 
stone. Yeah, and like the great thing about ogres, any ogre model, is that they're, you know, just bigger. They're, they're like painting them now, especially now that they have the more human, warmer, pinker flesh tones. It's just like painting like an empire character, but, <clears throat> but just larger on a larger scale. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do in um, this base coat step is we're gonna paint tin bits on the dark metal areas. So you're gonna take your tin bits and Oops, sorry there. Okay, uh, we're gonna take our tin bits and we're gonna paint in the gauntlets. Or the, they're not really gauntlets because they don't cover the fingers, but what do you call these? Bracers? I think I called them bracers once in this video already. And hear my dog snoring. So Tin Bits has this really great old um, weathered look to it already. It's very dark and um, still has that metallic shine to it. It's gonna be sad when this uh, goes away. <laughs> yeah, my dog. My dog is totally snoring. Ooh, gecko. Some of you might have seen the, um, the the video I made a long time ago, where I found a, a gecko had gotten into my my Eldar um, models, my modeling cabinet with the Eldar in it, and um, so I started playing Unchained Melody and made like the gecko was dancing um, with one of the I, I don't I don't remember what if it was a striking scorpion or something. Anyways, I, I've been wondering, like, oh, where did that gecko go? I haven't seen it around my house in so long. Like, I, I thought I chased it away, chased it out, whatever. Well, let it come through. So I was like, oh, I, I guess it, I guess it left my house. It's gone. And um, I'm cleaning out my, all my Warhammer stuff in my room the other day. And guess whose petrified skeleton I found at the bottom of a stack of, <laughs> like, goblin frames and uh, wolf rider and spider rider frames. I was like, oh, my gecko. He was going to be a YouTube sensation. Like that Fred guy. But now he's a skeleton. Clean your hobby area, kids. It had been a while since I cleaned. I just let the let the sprues pile up. It's the last time. No more. So you never know when a 
and a cute little gecko will get in and then get trapped. And then end up a skeleton, is that right, master? <clears throat> yes, that's, that's right, Igor. He went to fly with the angels. Yes. Painting um fingernails now. Sorry, that's what I'm doing. And that is uh, just about it. Oh, I've missed little uh, tin bits there. Um. <laughs> Dog. <coughs> Keeps us up all night with his barking until you go outside and give him food and then he barks some more. So we bring him in. Okay, the last thing we're actually gonna do before we get into the washes, I just realized it, is we're gonna take a little bit of tau sept ochre. And you're gonna notice this as well on the um, model on the Games Workshop website is that the knife in his belt has this kind of yellowish brown um, kind of holster I guess that it's in so we're just I forgot to water my paint down just now because I'm talking but ideally you want to water your tau sept ochre down and then just paint paint it right here I thought it was odd that it wasn't going to be done in steel like iron but Oh well, whatever. Okay, it sounds like my dog's gonna suffocate, so I'm going to wake him up and feed him and get him out of here. And hopefully he won't bark anymore. And then um come back in a minute to do the washes. Okay, so now we're gonna do the washes and the two colors that we're gonna use mainly Devlin mud and ogren flesh. So we're gonna do ogren flesh first because while that's drying, while we're doing Devlin mud. Um, we can see whether or not we want to go back over and do another, do another, um, you know, another layer. So I'm just taking, loading up my brush with ogre and flesh and putting it on the model, then just spreading it around and <clears throat> making sure that it gets into all of the shadowy uh, parts, recesses, forming natural shadows by pooling in the lower areas. This is where the washes really come into their own and why um, I'm glad that Games Workshop is keeping them in some form and um, bringing them over to their new paint line because this is really like the most awesome innovative things that they've done for the for the <coughs> their <laughs> paint range I think. Their metallics I've um, heard aren't as good, their foundations are good, they have good coverage but um, you could find pretty comparable stuff elsewhere but it's their Games Workshop washes that really set the bar nice and high By controlling the wash, you can really control how light or dark your overall model is. <clears throat> if you want a darker model, then you just add more wash and it will do the trick. If you want a lighter model, then just thin the wash down with some water before applying and then that should do the trick as well. For washes, you would have to think carefully about <clears throat> which color was the next shade down oops in your um, in your color scheme and then uh, water that paint down to the point where it would still have some pigments flowing around in it but not um, totally change the the look and the color of what you've already painted so it's hard to find the balance back before they came out with the washes <coughs> All the flesh areas, fingers, arms, face, the head, the back. <clears throat> so 
so now we're gonna get started with the um spread that out a little bit we're gonna get started with the devlin mud and we're gonna do basically the same thing on all of the other areas of the model so the cloth and the leather and um the all the iron and the metal the uh bronze dwarf bronze and the um, den of stone straps up here front of his cannonball sling. And his gut plate. of the model to give like natural looking shading that's kind of what you want you want to just spread it out to where you're gonna be happy with it so I think something like that is what I'll go for So I'm going to grab some a sermon blue. Oh, we should also do some <clears throat> Devlin mud over the over the holster of the dagger. You always want to make sure you turn your model to as much angles as you can because then you don't want to miss any surfaces like if I didn't turn my model this way, I would have missed underneath these straps. Twenty Devlin muds, but can't find my sermon blue. <clears throat> so I'm gonna actually use two colors: a sermon blue and Baal red. And the Baal red is gonna go onto the tin bits, and that's gonna pop it out with some color. So on all of these metal parts that we painted the tin bits, we're gonna get this Baal red color on. See how that brightens up, gives it a nice splash of color, <clears throat> warmth, I guess you call it. And the sermon blue is going right onto my fingers when I close the pot. Ah, GW. Grumble, grumble, grumble. And the paints.
sure you get all the different angles before the wash stops drying <clears throat> or else it'll cause streaks when you try to paint over but see look how how well that kind of give 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 us some some shade and definition <coughs> <coughs> Um, much better than doing like a bad at black or a Devlin mud. All right, so that's the washes phase of <clears throat> of this model. We're gonna let it dry and come back to it tomorrow to finish up highlighting, and then we can um, get on to the next part, which would be the cannon 